Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're back in War Thunder and I apologize for the wait, unfortunately I had some personal issues to take care of. But today we are going to be looking at the Farman F22.2 or the 222.2, which is going to be a grace for Irish people to say. But anyway, let's talk about the uh, F22 series in general and then we'll get into how I think this thing is going to perform in game. So over the last few dev blogs and also in the five interesting French aircraft video, I have actually talked about the F220 uh, series of aircraft, but I think it's worth going into a bit more detail on the design of this thing and also why uh, it seems so outdated by the time the war comes around. Uh, just because it seems to follow a very much a pattern of French aircraft, but this one is a bit more extreme. So before when I've talked about when uh, these machines were at least uh, asked for. So the, I the general idea happens where you have like an air ministry, the air ministry goes right, what we need is we need this type of bomber, it needs to be two engine, it needs to have two turrets, and it needs to have you know, um, it needs to be able to carry this much. So then a bunch of designers design an aircraft and then one, and then they build bro prototypes and then they try them out and then one wins the contract and then the contract produces the vehicles and so on and so forth. Well, with the F-220, one of the biggest issues uh, France actually had was the fact that they couldn't really decide on what they really wanted because the uh, I suppose you would call it pseudo air ministry or the French aviation industry was just completely always changing constantly which meant that sometimes it was hard to get a definitive focus on what um, you they were trying to do so the first uh, prototype or the first you know if, if you'd like to call it a prototype of the F-220 actually had its first flight in May of 1932 and over its time, there was about 80 units of the F-220 series of aircraft built between 1935 and 1938. And this was the first in, a, in what was going to be a long line of bombers with this push-pull style of engine, which was seen on the earlier prototypes of the F-211, and also some of the other F-series of heavy bombers. If you don't know what the push-pull engine is, uh, if you have a look at the uh, dev blog itself, and you have a look at the pictures that it has, basically you will see some very odd engines on it. When I've talked about uh, this mission before, I've said it is a four-engine bomber, and you may be a bit confused, because you only see two engines. Well, if you actually look at the push-pull configuration, it's basically one engine on the front, one engine on the back, therefore creating this idea of the push-pull. Um, obviously, this didn't take off because, uh, well, it didn't take off in general uh, engineering of flights just because it isn't as efficient as having four in a line, mainly down to air resistance and the fact that the second engine and the back would always um, be less powerful than the one on the front, or at least it would uh, create less uh, less lift and stuff like that. So therefore, it was it didn't really work out very well. But anyway, uh, let's uh, go forward. So as I said, uh, in the interwar period, so between 1918 and 1939, the French avi industri aviation industry was kind of a little bit all over the place. Uh, changing hands all the time, not really deciding what they wanted to do, so therefore they needed to get an air ministry in to sort everything out, and that was the, um, the L'Air de Aeronautique, or Aeronautique d'Air. And they, by 1936, decided uh, what, you know, needed to be done and everything. But you've got to remember the F-220 series of aircraft came before that, uh, the F-211, being the definitive prototype of the series, came out in 1932. So therefore, it was kind of in production before all of this unification uh, came out. But anyway, uh, the single prototype of the F-211 was used to define what was going to be France's new heavy bomber in the form of the F-220. So the F-220... Uh, 
compared to the F211. It had a revised uh, form and it carried an all new tail unit and also some new engines, the Hispano Sousa 12 LBR series of engines. And uh, at the same time, unfortunately for the F220, which had the upgraded engine and the all-new tail unit, um, it pretty much, that prototype of the F220, which was also labeled the F220-0 and also the F220B, became a mail plane, uh, just because it didn't really have um, a use. I talked about this in uh, the other video. So anyway, so after they created the F220, which was seen in a step in the right direction, but it definitely had issues with it, they created the F221. Now this had uh, closed gunner stations, uh, so therefore that obviously improved comfort for the gunners and also communication between the ensuite radio. Uh, it also carried some new engines, the Gnome Roan 12 KDR engines. And unfortunately, uh, there was only one prototype, once again, of this machine, the F221.01, and they used that as a basis to create 10 uh, bombers for main production. So they did, they created 10 of the F221, so maybe we see them in game. But then came along the definitive variant of the F220. This is the F.222 or the Model F.222.1, uh, which is very similar to the one we're going to have in-game, but it's not the exact one. So, the F2221 had retractable undercarriage, it had the defensive turrets, it also had the Gnome Rone 12 Kears uh, engines, and it also fe featured some interesting leveled out uh, wing panels. Uh, and also it had a shorter nose assembly, uh, basically so it didn't stick out as much. 11 of the F222.1s were constructed, and then the F222.01 uh, was a prototype for the plane that is in this dev blog, the F222.2. God, we're getting into British naming standards here. Uh, it had a redesigned nose section, which was longer, which is why you can see in the dev blog this thing had quite a huge nose with the lad sad on the end of it. And it also had some better engines, so it had the Gnome Roan uh, 14N-11 engines, and also some dihedral uh, plates on the outer wing panels, which once again, you can see in the uh, dev blog. 24 aircraft of the Point 2 were delivered, uh, so this basically became the mainstay, the F222.2, which is why we're seeing it as the dev blog. This does not mean that the F220, the F221, or the F222.1 cannot be in the game. I would actually say they're probably all uh, going to get into uh, the game at some point. Now, there was an F2220, which was uh, created not not the same as the F220.0 or the F220-0. This is the F.2220, which uh, became an airliner, or at least a proposed airliner, for during the war and after the war. It had four Hispano Sousa 12X GRS engines, and only one prototype uh, was actually completed, and there was no serial production. At the time it was created, it was seen that if they needed an airliner, they could use one of the existing uh, older aircraft, or maybe they just didn't need, or, or maybe uh, the reason they didn't want to do it is because, well, they just didn't really have uh, any use for it uh, at that time when the F-22s were coming about. So after the F-222s, there was of course the F-223, which is its supposed better brother. So the F-223 brought along uh, an all-new tail featuring twin rudders, so a design which uh, we see a lot going forward into the war. Uh, it was more aerodynamically friendly for the plane, and the power uh, stemmed from four Hispano Sousa 14 AA Dash 08 or Dash 09 Sousa engines, which had 1100 horsepower horsepower outputs uh, individually, which is absolutely crazy. 
Uh, this meant that from this, the F223, they created a bunch of other variants from it because they thought this was going to be the way forward for heavy bombers. Unfortunately, by the time that all of this stuff came out, uh, let's just say the production capabilities was a little bit down. So, uh, the NC223.1 uh, served as the prototype of the F223, and then there was eight NC223.3 bombers, and uh, also they made a .4 variant, which was once again a mail plane conversion. They love their mail planes in France. There was 15 NC2233 models, which emerged as bombers, and the main difference between this and the F223 was the fact that they had four Hispano Sousa 12Y29 engines, so upgraded engines over the uh, prototype, and then the NC2234s, uh, became three passenger airliners for Air France and powered by the Hispano Sousa 12Y37 series of engines. So, the final entry to the F220 series of aircraft was the F224, and it wasn't particularly used for uh, any uh, military operations. It was a 40 seat passenger airliner for Air France. And uh, unfortunately, it wasn't uh, purchased by Air France. It was designed for them, though. The prototype was. And uh, the issues that they had was the three-engine configuration and how it would actually handle at altitude. Well, they could have just talked to the Italians and they would have told them that it wasn't great. Uh, then the... The uh, th the ones which were purchased already, but not used for uh, passenger use, were converted to transports uh, for the French Air Force under the F-224TT designation. And at the same time, the French Navy, they also eventually uh, used the F-220 series just for mainly transports and reconnaissance and little things like that. So. The definitive variant of the F-222, which is probably the one we're getting in-game, the Point .2, uh, you could maybe argue the Point .1, which was the definitive version, but if you look at overall numbers, the Point .2 is the one which um, majority was made. Uh, it actually entered the French Air Force in 1937, and in 1939, uh, they were the only four-engine bombers that France actually had at the start of the war. And they were used uh, in a traditional way, uh, so, you know, bombing targets. I believe they were the first uh, bomber to actually uh, hit Berlin, at least from the Allied side. Uh, actually, I mean, I suppose the, the issue with all of these designations... Like, the, the bomber which actually hits, or the bombers, I should say, that hits uh, Berlin were mainly comprised of the NC223.3's uh, bombers. But there was also one F222 there, which was uh, used by the French pilot James Dennis. Uh, so, uh, I, actually no, sorry. Uh, let's let's start that, let's start that again. So the first Allied bombing campaign on Berlin was done by the NC223.3, which was a variant of the F.222, which is what we're guessing in game. That is one of the most notable things that this series of aircraft was able to do. Uh, in other roles, it did take uh, some traditional bomber roles, such as uh, bombing certain, uh, you know, uh, places. But at the same time, it was also used for leaflet dropping, which is something that stuff like the Whitworth Whitley was used for, generally uh, to drop stuff saying, you know, uh, basically propaganda, if you want to put it like that. Uh, the other notable thing that this series of bombers did was uh, what I talked about in the previous video, uh, five interesting French aircraft, where pilot James Dennis was able to uh, ferry 20 of his men and uh, his friends back to Britain from France to be able to uh, fight uh, against the Germans as the Free French Air Force uh, in after the loss of France in June 1940. But obviously, by 1940, uh, there wasn't really a lot of production or anything like that, so after the loss of France, um, the F-222s didn't really see a lot of service, and overall, 
I mean, they were used kind of in North Africa, but not really. Uh, they were mainly used for transporting stuff. But after 1940, they were just pretty much useless. And that's kind of unfortunate, because they had some interesting designs in there, especially with all the different variations. But as per usual, it's as if France just hits a block at 1940, and you don't really blame them, because that's when they lost France. So it's kind of hard to design stuff, and especially large, four-engined bombers. So yeah, uh, that's basically the history of the whole tree of the Farman F22s, twos, <laughs> which we may get in game. But when we actually look at um, some of the things about how it's going to affect the game, one thing that is really interesting is its bomb load. Now, overall, uh, this machine, in real life, could carry... Let's just try and find this. It could carry up to 9,240 pounds of conventional dropped ordnance. It also had three 7.5 millimeters in the nose, dorsal, and ventral. So, overall, they're not going to be that useful. They will have decent coverage, but because the aircraft's so big, you'll be able to approach it from pretty much anywhere, and uh, you won't be too bothered. This thing won't really have any armor either. Uh, but the biggest issue is its bomb load. It has an absolutely massive bomb load, but in every other area, it's not doing well in. So, one of the biggest issues uh, that I see with a plane like this is we end up in a situation where this thing's probably going to get quite a low BR, because in every single instance, it's not very good, but its bomb load is really good. Now, because of the bomber spawn that is there in the game at every single level of the game, what you're generally going to run into is a machine which is going to be able to bomb out all three of the zones below them and then maybe bomb some other stuff. At the same time, a lot of these smaller maps which are reserved for uh, rank 1 and sometimes rank 2 vehicles don't have a lot of ground targets on them. So if you start throwing in bombers which have a ton of bomb loads um, which are also in small configurations, so 50 kilos, 100 kilos, stuff like that, which is something we kind of see present in the video, what you're going to do is you're going to give the uh, give one side a bomber which can bomb you out very quickly. And remember you can have a maximum of four of them on uh, any team. So we may have a few issues in that regard, uh, but once again, it depends what BR they put this at. It is an incredibly slow machine. Uh, what we're talking about here is uh, a top speed of 199 miles an hour, or 320 kilometers an hour, and this is with the uh, Gnome Rhone 14N11s, which is probably the best uh, engines that the series got. It has three turrets with uh, 7.5 millimeters and so with that it's very hard to decide where this thing is going to go if i was going to be conservative i would put this thing at 3.0 obr it would still be useful if it got to the target but the classic thing is can you get to the target because if you put this thing at a low br which should be done, technically, since it's pretty much a 1937 aircraft, you're going to run into a hell of a lot of issues when it starts coming up against biplanes. Because even though biplanes can get up to it and get after it, the question is, will the F-22-2 be able to get to its target before the enemy is able to get up to altitude? And with stuff like the S-81 in the game, which is also an incredibly slow aircraft, it's shown to me that yes, yes they can get to the target uh, before the enemy, the enemy is able to get up to their altitude. So we'll have to see where they put it. If I was them personally, I'd put it at rank 2, around 3, maybe 2.7 uh, or uh, 3.0. I think that fits pretty well. Uh, I can't see it being lower than 2.0. I really hope it isn't another one of these 1.7 bombers that we have in game. Uh, because it doesn't fit that style. Just like the S81 doesn't. Uh, so hopefully, uh, this thing doesn't break the game. 
It has the opportunity to break the game, but we'll have to see in the future. Everything is terrible about it, apart from its bomb load. It's as simple as that. So, <laughs> we'll have to see. I'll see you next time.